Do you think Islam is at war with the West? I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred there. There's a tremendous hatred. We have to get to the bottom of it. There is an unbelievable hatred of us. In, in Islam itself? Uh, you're going to have to figure that out, okay? You'll get another Pulitzer, right? But you're going to have to figure that out. But there is a tremendous hatred. And we have to be very vigilant. We have to be very careful. And we can't allow people coming into this country who have this hatred of the United States. I guess the and, question and, is... And of people that are not Muslim. I guess the, the question is, is there a war between the West and radical Islam? Or is there a war between well, the West and Islam It's itself? radical, but it's very hard to define. It's very hard to, to separate because you don't know who's who. I am French, non-Muslim. And uh, I am traveling eight months in India. I, uh, I am 18 years old. I compelled my 12 uh, in June. And so, uh, inshallah, if you, you agree, I will meet you in private. But now uh, I just would like to ask you um, about the Jews. Uh, maybe if I am not wrong, you said that uh, it is written in the Quran that Jews and Pians are the uh, strength, uh, strong enemies uh, of believers, Muslim believers, Muslim. And uh, I would like to know how this verse can favorize peace in, uh, in uh, humankind uh, when we see the troubles between Palestine and Israel, uh, how some Muslim and some Jews can uh, cannot be, uh, cannot misunderstand this verse because maybe it can uh, provoke, uh, it can provoke some uh, mis misinterpretation or if it's literally that uh, Jews and Muslims have to be enemies. Well, that's a very good question. That he said, I said in my speech, and according to the verse of the Quran of Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32, which says that strongest in enmity to the Muslims would be the Jews and the pagans, and the closest in love would be the Christians. So if they wanted to create enmity when they say that the Jews and the Muslims should fight, the Quran doesn't say Jews and the Muslims should fight. The Quran says strongest in enmity to the Muslims, to the believers, will be Jews. It does not say that Muslims should fight with the Jews. It doesn't say that. But it says that the Jews, by nature as a whole, they'll be against Muslims. And I told in my lecture, there are many Jews who accept Islam. There are many Jews who are good to Muslims. But as a whole, as a whole, if you take Jews as a whole and the Christian as a whole, the Christians are closer than the Jews as a whole. This is a fact. For example, the Quran says that the Jews are intelligent also. That's a fact. If they're intelligent, they're intelligent. That doesn't mean that it hides the fact. And the Quran also says that they will be as a whole a staunchest enemy. So this is one of the falsification tests. That today, if you want to prove the Quran wrong, if the Jews, the Jews get together, all of them, and they decide, Let, let's prove the Quran wrong. At least for three, four years, we will be better than the Christians. Let's stop the war of Palestine. You know the Palestinians? The Jews were kicked out by Hitler. Hitler insulated six million Jews. He kicked them out of Germany. The Arabs, the Palestinians, they do Alan was Alan. Come with open arms. After a few years, they are kicked out of the home. Imagine someone gives the traveler his home to live, and the traveler kicks him out of his home, and he's shouting that he has taken my house, and you're calling them terrorists. So what they have to do is <laughs> let's get together and solve this problem. What are the problem is? Not forever. Few years. Four, five years only. And the problem is solved. So we aren't telling that the Muslims should fight with the Jews. In fact, the Quran says, even if your enemy wants peace, several places, even if they come to fight you, it's mentioned in Surah Anfal, in the battle, if they want peace, give it to them. So Quran is always for peace. Quran is always encouraging them. But if a person does not want peace to prevail, what can we do? Islam is a religion of peace. It wants peace, but it even mentions facts. That means we have to be careful of the Jews, not that we have to fight them. 
unless they come and fight with you. That's a different thing. My name is Aryan Aryaputra Kumar Narayan Singh Konte from Delhi. I speak no continue English to English. I'm very very sorry. सर मैं पूछना चाहता हूँ क्या भगवान के बनाए हुए सभी नियमों में परिवर्तन होता रहता है क्या मैं इसलिए पूछना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि इस्लाम धर्मावली बोलते हैं कि यानी कि मनुष्य का कभी पूर्ण जन्म नहीं होता है और जबकि श्रीमद् भागवत गीता में श्री कृष्णा ने अर्जुन से कहा है हे पार्थ कि इंसान यानी कि कई बार जन्म लेता है शायद तुम्हें नहीं मालूम है मेरे कई जन्म हो चुके हैं मैंने पहला जो गीता का ज्ञान दिया था वो पहले मनु को दिया था जिसे आप शायद नू इस्लाम का नाम से जानते होंगे और दूसरी बार कहते हैं कि मैंने सूर्य देव को यह ज्ञान दिया था उसके बाद मैं आपको दे रहा हूँ तो सर आप क्या बता सकते हैं कि मनुष्य का पूर्ण जन्म होता है या नहीं होता है क्या भगवान के बनाए हुए नियमों में क्या परिवर्तन होता रहता है क्या समय अनुसार मैं ये पूछना चाहता हूँ can they be changed in the law and the teachings of almighty god can they be changes and question 2 is that can a person be reborn can he be reborn and equal the verse of the gita which i'll come to it later on as far as the first question is concerned can the laws of god keep on changing if the law of god is time bound if it's meant for only a particular group of people and for a particular time period it will keep on changing for example as i mentioned my talk torah zabur injil all of them were revelation of god but they were meant for a particular group of people and for a particular time period but once the last and final revelation of god has been revealed nothing new can be added nothing can be subtracted quran is the last and final revelation of almighty god no other revelation is going to come Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger there is no other messenger to come Allah says in surah azab chapter 3 verse number 40 ma kana muhammadun aba ahadim min rijalikum wal akhir rasulullah wa khatam nabiyin wa kana allah bi kulli shay'in alima that muhammad peace be upon him is not the father of any of you men but he is a messenger of allah and is the seal of the prophets and allah is all knowing full of wisdom After Prophet Muhammad, if anyone says that he is a messenger of God, he gets revelation. Then he requires a psychiatrist. Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. After Quran, no other revelation will come. And Quran clearly mentions in Surah Maida, chapter five, verse number three: "On this day, have I completed my religion for you, and have chosen for you Islam, and completed my favor on you." Once the religion is completed, nothing new can be added, nothing can be subtracted. So, as far as your question, yes. the old revelations they can be changes but the basic message from the first revelation till the last about tauhid about oneness of god is the same so all the revelations that came before the quran they have not maintained their pure form they have been changed by human beings and because it was not meant for eternity almighty god didn't feel it fit to be preserved but as far as the quran is concerned allah says in surah hijr chapter number 15 verse number 9 we have revealed the quran and we shall guard it from corruption this quran even if all the human beings try and change the quran they cannot do it all the human being and jinn they get together they can't change the quran so as far as the previous revelation yes they can be a change but the final revelation no it cannot be changed it is the ultimate now coming to the second question सेकंड क्वेश्चन ये है सर नहीं सेकंड क्वेश्चन में जुड़ा रहा हूँ यानी कि अल्लाह के पास तीन नेक बंदे जो रहते हैं उनमें हमारी ओर से ब्रह्मा विष्णु महेश तीनों के काम अलग अलग हैं यानी कि पहला ब्रह्मा यानी कि जैसा जो जीव काम करता है उसके हिसाब से उसको जन्म यानी कि योनी में भेज देते हैं दूसरा काम है विष्णु जो विष्णु जी हैं वो जीवों की पालना पोषना की ओर ध्यान देते हैं तीसरे जो महादेव हैं जिनको देवादि देव महादेव यानी कि शिव शंकर बोलते हैं यानी कि वो सब का हिसाब बराबर करते हैं यानी कि आपके पास जो यानी कि अल्लाह ताला के पास जो तीन बंदे नेक बंदे रहते हैं उनका भी काम क्या है यही है भाई साहब आप इसमाइल इसराइल नया सवाल पूछा जी इसका जवाब दूंगा पहले पुराने सवाल का जवाब दूंगा नहीं मैं जी आपने पुनर्जन्म की बात की बराबर जी तो उसका जवाब चाहिए या नहीं चाहिए 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 ना तो पहले पुनर्जन्म की बात करूँगा फिर आपकी ब्रह्मा विष्णु और शिवा की भी बात करूंगा हाँ इनशाला तीनों की बात करूंगा मैं न्यू क्वेश्चन 
So I told him first I'll reply to the old question, then I'll come to a new question. His previous question was that do you believe in reincarnation in a second life? As far as reincarnation is concerned, what you quoted is Bhagavad Gita. But the highest scripture in Hinduism is Ved. Vedas are number one. They are the Shrutis. Then later on come the Smritis, Mahabharat. Part of Mahabharat is Bhagavad Gita. Though Bhagavad Gita is more widely read than the Vedas, but the authenticity in grade, Veda is higher. The Ved speaks about Punarjanam. Punarjanam means next life. And if you read the Quran, the Quran too speaks about next life. Quran says you'll come in this world, you'll die, again you'll be resurrected. Punar means next, Janam means life. Punar Janam. Nowhere does the Veda speak about death, life, death, life, death, life, death, life. Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> Neither does the Bhagavad Gita speak about that. What you quoted to me is the verse of Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 4, verse number 22. I'm giving you the reference. Where it's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, according to the Hindus, it's the word of Almighty God. And it says that as the human beings keep on changing the clothes, they throw away the old clothes and put on new clothes, same way the soul will take a new body. Will throw away the old body, new body. I have got no problem. In this world, you have this body. When you die, you are rejected, new body, no problem. It is matching with the Quran, matching with the Veda. But this philosophy, what you're talking about reincarnation, in Sanskrit, it is called as samskara. The theory of reincarnation, the theory of life and death, called as rebirth, correct? Now this theory was propounded by the scholars of Hinduism. It's nowhere mentioned in the Vedas. Why? Because they could not justify. Some people are born deaf, some people born rich, some people born in a poor family, some people are born healthy, some people congenital heart disease. How can God be unjust? So they couldn't justify. So they came with the philosophy of death, life, death, life, karma and dharma. Karma is the deed, action, dharma is the law. So what justification? How can God be unjust? How can a person be born with a heart disease? Ah, last life, he did some sin. This was a philosophy assumption by the scholars of Hinduism, not by Ved. So then they came with this philosophy and they say that if you do good deeds, in your next life, you will be born of a higher degree. And the universal brotherhood of Hinduism is all living creatures are brotherhood. So maybe you are born sometime as a cockroach, sometime as a rat, sometime as a cat, sometime as a dog, sometime as a human being. Human being is the highest level. So if you do good deeds, you are born higher. If you do bad deeds, you are born lower. Right? And you are born as a human being seven times. How many times? Seven, this is the philosophy of the Hindu scholars, called as samsara. Now I'm asking you a question, brother. In this world, sin is increasing or decreasing? Sin, per day ke ghatri hai? Per day. mashallah, very good. Sin is increasing. Population of human being, insan jo janta, insan hai per day ke ghatri Population per day ke ghatri hai? Per day. Per day, mashallah. So sin is also increasing, and human beings are increasing. If sin is increasing, human beings should decrease. So what we realize, logically, it's not correct. Therefore, I believe in punar janam. Punar janam is next life, which even Quran speaks about next life. But only one. You come in this world only once. Now coming to your third question. About Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh or Shiva. Same, same. Two names, Mahesh and Shiva, same. But more popular known as Shiva. Right? The creator, the destroyer, the sustainer. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. And you ask me that does God have these three forms? No, God doesn't have three forms. Does he have any people? Yes, he has many angels. See, alone God is sufficient. He does not require anyone's help. But if he wants, he can do it through an angel, if he wants. If he doesn't want, no problem. He just wills, and it is. Kun, fire kun. Be, and it is. As far as the Hindus, what they believe, they believe in somewhat similar trinity what the Christians believe, even the Hindus believe. That Almighty God, one God is God to create, Brahma. One God is God to destroy, 
Shiva. One God is God to sustain, Vishnu. So separate God for creation, separate God for sustaining, separate God for destroying. The Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 22, if there were gods more than one God, surely they would have fought among themselves. And Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 91, that if there were many gods, they would have piled upon one another. And that's what we find in Hindu mythology. One god fighting with the other god, one god defeating the other god, third god helping the second god. How can gods fight? So best is only one god. Superpower is only one. And that is what the Ved says. If you ask a common Hindu, how many gods does he believe in? Some will say three, some will say hundred, some will say thousand, some will say 33 crores, 330 million. But if you ask a learned Hindu, that how many gods should a Hindu believe in, he will tell you Hindu should believe only in one god. But the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. What he says, that everything is God. The tree is God, the sun is God, the moon is God, the human being is God, and the snake is God. What we Muslims say, everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe S. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God. The sun belongs to God. The moon belongs to God. The human being belongs to God. As well as the snake belongs to God. So the major difference between the Hindus and the Muslims is the Hindus say everything is God. We Muslims say everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe S. The major difference is apostrophe S. If we can solve this difference of apostrophe S, the Hindus and the Muslims, We'll be united. How do we do it? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, sawa im bayna Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bihi shayyaw. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhiz abadun abadun arbaban min dunillah. That we erect not among ourselves lords and pits other than Allah. Fain tawallah. If then they turn back. Faqul ishadu. Say we bear witness that we are Muslims bowing over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best way to analyze any religion is not to try and understand what the followers are doing, but they have to analyze the scriptures. Now, if we analyze Hindu scriptures, if we read the Upanishads, which Ved Upanishad the highest, it's mentioned in Dogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. It is a Sanskrit quotation. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in Shweta Sitar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Nachaste kasij, janita na chadipa. Of him, there is no Lord. He has got no parents. Almighty God has got no superior. He has got no mother. He has got no father. It's mentioned in the Shweta Sitar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19. Nachaste pratima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. Pratima means image. Pratima means photograph. Idol, sculpture, painting. Almighty God has got no photograph, has got no sculpture, has got no statue, has got no painting. He has got no images. And amongst the Hindu scriptures, the most sacred are the Ved. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3. Natasya Pratimasti. Of that Almighty God, there is no Pratima, there is no images, there is no photograph, there is no sculpture, there is no statue. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 8. Almighty God is pure. It's mentioned in Yajurvay chapter number 40, verse number 9. Andhatma Pavishanti, ya Asambuti Mupaste. They are entering darkness, those who worship the Asambuti. Asambuti are the natural things like fire, water, air, etc. And the verse continues, they are entering more in darkness, those who worship the Sambuti. Sambuti are the created things like table, chair, idol, etc. Who says that? Yajurvay chapter number 40, verse number 9. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism is Ekam Brahm. There is only one God, not a second one. Not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. Welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoy the video till the last minute. My dear brother and sisters, with the passage of time, the world is changing day by day. I still remember the days when the George Bush was the the George Bush was the capital of America and how cruel he was I still remember the videos when I watch 
on the TV of Afghanistan, how he attacked Afghanistan and more other, you know, countries. Actually, this is great politics in the world, especially by the American people. They create war, different religions, and then they sold their own arms company. In this way, they integrate their economy up to high and so much. That's why I can say that uh, if America exists, it will never create a peace among the countries because if it peace everywhere, so who will be buy their weapons? It's uh, a very strategic strategy by the Americans people and especially by the Americans presidents. Now, after the Bush, we have seen the Barack Obama and two times he was has been appointed as the president of America. Now, this Donald Trump, previous time, the Americans people reject him uh, when he was declared as a president. So after his five years, he was kicked out by the people. Now again he won the election and he is uh, uh, electoral by the American president as American president nowadays. He was a wrestler. You, if you search, so he was a wrestler, professional wrestler and his mindset was completely broken when he was beaten by someone on his head. That's why he's talking so much brutally. He said Muslim had us. Yes, of course. Muslim not only hate you, but Muslim hate those people who does not follow the rules and regulation of Islam and who kill innocent people. Yes, we had the Israel people. Why? Because they kill the innocent kids, they kill women, they kill all age people, they attack on schools, they attack on hospitals. Yes, we had them. We had the Jews. And that's why the Holy Quran says, you people, you Jew people, you do not give a free hand to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So how we are? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he visit to Medina, there he make a statement. Here he make an undertaking statement with the Jews that you will not be interact with any kind of enemies of us from any support from any kind from not from inner side nor from outer side if you were caught by doing such kind of activities it would be really difficult for you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned these jews but they did not obey the rules of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companion kick out these bloody Jews from the Medina and from the Khaybar. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam give them a lesson for the life. That's why Muslim had those Jews because they did not like peace among the people. Among the people. They just want to create the war and just only sold their weapon. That is their only own strategy. Now, you have listened to the name of Hitler. Why he killed million and billion of Jews? Because he know that these will never be a common human beings. They will be sheep. They will be sheep in the form of human. They will be wolf in the form of human. That's why. Hitler killed many of Jews and he talked to the people that I leave so many people, so many Jews alive that upcoming world know the reality of these people. Now, when I watch the videos of Gaza and Palestine, it's really, you know, set my heart that what kind of people they are. Are you not human beings? Are you not have your kids and wives that you are killing small kids and you are attacking humans with the missiles on the hospitals and school and bombing them. So my dear brother and sister, if Muslim had this kind of Jews, that is uh, 1400 years ago it was taken by the Holy Quran. But if these Jews, if they are not a part of anti-Islamic parties, if they are not a part of anti-Islamic activities, if they do not disrespect our Prophet, then we will not say anything. 
but when you are disrespecting disagree this uh, respecting our uh, our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and disrespecting our holy book then we will teach you a lesson for the life that's why today ne nobody can feel fear from the jews but when they listen the name of hitler then they very keep calm from one's inside into their home and after that you watch the video of dr zakir naik what a beautiful answer has been given by dr zakir naik it was really amazing i hope you enjoy the video if you like the video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends